Amen. If you would take your Bible and turn to the 28th chapter of Ezekiel's prophecy, verses 11 through 19, our theme passage verses for this morning, and then one subsequent scripture will be the fourth chapter. Come give me the ring I need now. I need the volume up because this is a larger crowd. I need uh, chapter 4 of Luke's Gospel. <clears throat> Y'all looking at me funny. I, I cut all that mess off, you know. <laughs> cut my hair down. <laughs> and so I thought. <laughs> yeah, I just got tired of, you know, this trimming and cutting and looking to distinguish, they say. And you're hiding yourself. And then somehow you remember I used to wear it all black. And I was snow white. <laughs> Hiding who you are. And you hide behind that. And that affects everything else you do. So here's the pure mean here now. All right. I think I'm going to preach it a little bit to you today. And um, so I'm going to do the best I can for you on this. I want to talk about, um, we're going to stand and read verse 11, 12. 13 and 14. And we're going to read as congregants, meaning separate individuals, going up as one congregation to God, and we're reading his word to him. And whenever we read his word to him and pray his word to him, then we know response will come. That's very key. That's very important. We pause at all commas and punctuation marks. And we stop at all periods. So let us rise to our feet at Ezekiel chapter 28 as we honor the word of God. Commencing at verse 11, ready, set, read. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus said the Lord God, Thou sealest up the psalm full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was thy covering, the sardis, topaz, and the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, and the jasper, the sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle, and gold, the workmanship of thy tabrets, and of thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that, was, that I was created. Now here in verse 14 is the center and crux sort of of the word for today. Verse 14, ready, said, read. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth, and I have set thee so. Thou wast upon the holy mountain of God, Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of the fire. That's our text for today. I'm using it as a subject, don't let the devil ride. Repeat that after me. Don't, don't. let the devil ride. The devil ride. And then say subtopic, subtopic. Jesus, Jesus versus, the versus the devil. You might be seated. In a segment of eternity past, God brought into existence particularly gifted beings that have come through the ages to be called angels. They were spiritual beings possessing spiritual bodies, and they had the capacity for ageless existence. Amen. The ministry of the angels seemed to have been to fulfill the will of God 
by overseeing and controlling the star systems and the heavenly bodies. Also were they to control the physical forces governing the earth such as the seas, the wind, and the rain. Amen. Over this vast multitude of angelic beings, God placed a very special being that he came to call Lucifer. When God created Lucifer, he created him perfect. He created him wise and beautiful from the top of his head down to the bottom of sole of his feet. Lucifer was the most beautiful of all of God's beings. He was the choir leader of heaven. Yes, sir. He walked up and down heaven having personal intimacy with the Lord Jesus Christ. And as they walked, they talked together about all of the things of God, the creator, who had created the creation. And so here in this 28th chapter of Ezekiel, verses 11 through 19, God is speaking to a literal king. And this literal king is the king of Tyrus. Amen. This king is so conceited and bigoted that he, in the earlier part of the chapter, references himself as a god and says, I am a God. Amen. And so God says to the prophet Ezekiel, I want you to speak to this wicked king of Tyrus and let him know that he is not a God. Let him know there is but one God. And so Ezekiel now is speaking, but the words of his speech are so powerful that not only do these words go to the king on the throne, yes, but it goes to the power that is behind this wicked king. And this power, of course, is Satan, called Lucifer, came to be the devil himself. Several things that I want to bring out to you in this word today about Satan, about he who was once referenced as Lucifer. And I trust and hope that these things that I'm bringing about will blazon themselves into your minds and etch themselves into your consciousness and that these things about the devil you'll never forget now henceforth and forevermore and will come to know how they impact you today as it relates to your personal and individualistic lives. Amen. Point number one, Satan was created in perfection. Yes. Say that with me. Satan, Satan. was created, was created. In, perfection. in perfection. Let me establish that right here in this 28th chapter of Ezekiel verse 15. Thou wast what? Perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created. You were created in perfection. Amen. And that means he was the noblest of all beings. He was the most beautiful. He was the most exquisite. He was the highest of all beings that had ever been created. He was surpassing anything else in beauty. Yes, he was superlative in all wisdom. The way that he is described here in other places in the Bible gives us to understand that God is using symbolical language to describe him that we would have no other way of being able to comprehend or understand without such symbolical language being used. Amen. Let me insert here that the name of Satan that was given to him at the beginning, Lucifer. Yes, Sounds like it was a bad, ugly name to us now. But hear me that when God gave him the name Lucifer, it was not a bad name. It was the best and most proud name that any being could be the recipient of. Why? Because of what it means. 
Lucifer means light bearer. It means that he dwelt in the realm of the light. That's why it was such a damnation to Lucifer. And that's why it was such a come down and such a punishment for him to be banished ultimately into the eternal pits of hell a place of eternal darkness Amen. because here he was light in the realm of light yes, but because of his sin he has been put down into the eternal pit of darkness Amen. and then I want you to notice three things about him <clears throat> how he sounded number one how he looked number two and then the office he held, number three, and all three of these entities point to him being created in perfection. Uh, a under created in perfection is how he sound. You see that in verse 13, the E clause, A, B, C, D, E. It says that he had tabrets and pipes prepared in him. Amen. That means that uh, he had the sound of a pipe organ. Yes, sir. That it was like whenever he spoke, music was in his voice. Right he had such a roar and such a power that the whole universe responded to the music in his voice as though he had pathos Amen. in his voice. I get the inference here that it was something synonymous to that of a pipe organ. Uh, I've always wanted to have a church that had in it a pipe organ. There's something about the music of the pipe organ that sort of fills the air and the atmosphere like nothing else does. Amen. And so the book here is saying that whenever he spoke, he, 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 because of the tabrets that were in him and because of the pipes that were prepared in him that he filled up the universe with a sound that was so full. It was as though he was a psalm of voice. That's how he sounded. Created in perfection. But look at now at how he looked, how he was dressed, what made him beautiful. He's, he studded with all of these gems. And evidently he was clothed and clothed with studs from his head to his toes. Still in verse 13, backing up a little at the B clause, he had sardis, topaz, the diamond, the barrel, the onyx, and the jasper. I hate he wore that, but I can't help it. The sapphire, the emerald, and the carbuncle. Literally speaking, or symbolically speaking, it really makes no difference at all. Ladies and gentlemen, what God is saying here is that Lucifer, Satan, not only was he exquisite to listen to Tabret's pipes prepared in him but he was also marvelous to behold or look at because he's literally with all of these studs of jewels in his clothes Amen. dazzling in his appearance yes, see under created in perfection also the great office that he held but he was called the cherub that covers, that means he was the one who spread his wings out over the throne of God. Amen. See, the Bible says, in the mount of God. Yes. And the mount of God speaks of the authority of God. Whenever you read in the Bible, mount of God, it is talking about the authority of God. And so he's called here the Holy Mount of God. And he's walking up and down upon these stones in the Jewel City. Yes, and the Jewel City is described in the 21st 
chapter of Revelation when he says, I saw a new Jerusalem coming down from above. That's the jeweled city. Look at verse 14. Thou art the anointed cherub that covers. It says cover it, but when you drop TH in the King James Version, always add S and it gives you covers. For any word, S is always in the place of TH. And I have set thee so that thou wast upon the holy mountain of God Thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. It means he's living in the jeweled city. Yeah. He's a being who had access cut up by the, to the throne of God, and he was perfect, perfect. What do you mean? That means filled up with some. What does that mean? That means nothing else could be added to him. Nothing could be taken from him. Nothing could be multiplied on him. Nothing could be divided by him. He was filled up with some. He was a created being. You know, some people have in their minds the distorted idea that if he was created in perfection, that there is this thing of dualism between God and Lucifer or Satan, Amen. that there's always this power, God on one end and Satan on the other end, and sometimes God looks like he's winning, and then other times Satan looks like he's winning, and there's this tussling and struggling and wrestling back before, back and forth between God and Satan, but no, no. Satan is created in perfection, and that's the distinction. And that's what makes the difference. He was created. And the best way that I can make you understand is to talk about synonyms and anonyms that we come about to learn in language. The synonyms is when two words have the exact same meaning. Anonyms is when two words have the exact opposite meaning. And if I were to play with you for a few moments, the anonym game, then you'll begin to comprehend what I'm talking about as I talk about the difference in God and Lucifer. We'll play. You, you, I'm just going to shout a word out and you just shout out to me the opposite of the word, and that's the anonym. Let's play. Huh. How smart you are. <laughs> Boy, you're so smart. Isn't that some time I said it? You shouted back. Backward. Good. Black. Right. Good. Fat. God. Satan, devil, wrong. See, because in order for an anonym to be an anonym, you have to be the exact opposite of the word. You see, and God has no anonym. See, the reason why Satan cannot be God's anonym is because Satan was created in perfection and God was not created. He's the only self-existing one who was begun before the beginning ever began to be, but Satan was created and cannot be the anonym of the Almighty God. So point number one, Satan was created in perfection. Say it with me one more time, Satan was created in perfection. Point two, Satan was also corrupted in pride. Look at this corruption of pride in verse 15. Thou was perfect in thy ways from the day that thou was created till iniquity was found in thee. What does it mean, iniquity? Till iniquity, till sin, that's what he's saying, was found in thee. Now, let me show you what iniquity was. This iniquity was pride, see. Uh, um, 
It was pride. Verse 16. By the multitude of thy merchandise, they have filled the midst of thee. Midst of thee means your heart. So this could read, they have filled your heart with violence. In other words, this merchandise has caused your heart, Lucifer, to become filled with violence. That's what it's really saying. Now look at the word merchandise. What does it mean? It doesn't mean that Satan or Lucifer was some kind of a merchant, that he sold some merchandise, had a general store somewhere in the universe that all of the intelligent beings of glory would go by and shop at and he was an entrepreneur who would sell. No, not, not that kind of merchandise. Merchandise means simply that which passes through one's hands. So the merchandise that passed through the hands of Lucifer was the praise and worship of all of the intelligent beings. See, here he is standing in the pulpit see, behind heaven's book board. And the intelligent beings are giving praise and worship. And, and, and he receives the praise and worship and passes it on to God, the Father who sits on the throne. So the praise and worship that came from the 24 elders and the 48 angels and the archangels and the cherubims and the seraphims, all of that passed through his hands. And because it was passing through his hands, he became lifted up in iniquity, in pride. That meant that pride is the first sin. And whatever any of us doing wrong is because of our pride. I told them this morning, all of us got skeletons in our closets. You look holy here today. I look holy, I reckon. But um, we all got some skeletons in our closets. Why don't you talk to me? You ain't looking that holy that you can't say amen. <laughs> on that. We all got some skeletons. But the point I'm making is whatever your skeleton is, at the root of it is pride. Pride is the mother of all sin. Pride is the father of all sin. Pride is the parent of all sin. If you rob a bank, it's because you think you ought to have the money. Pride. If you commit incest with a baby, it's because you think you ought to be fulfilled. Pride. If you're hooked on drinking or hooked on drugs, it's your pride that's got you hooked. All sin roots back to pride. All of it. All of it. Low down dirty dog, this devil is just messed us all up. And he's the cause of it because of pride. Pride, pride, because of pride. And so he got lifted up in pride, taking all of this praise and worship from the intelligent beings, giving it to God. He starts feeling, I'm too great. I'm too grand. I'm too glorious. I'm too magnificent. I'm too significant to be anything less than a God. And oh! of this glory I'm giving to him I ought to be the one to be receiving this and so notice his heart in the midst of it was violence verse 16 the B clause and thou hast sinned therefore I will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of God you no longer have authority that's what God is telling him. You ain't got no more authority here now. The D clause, A, B, C, D clause, and I will destroy thee, O covering cherub, from the midst of the stones of fire. In other words, you got to get out of here. You, 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 you've gotten to the place now you feel like you're better than I am. 
So you just get on out of here and, and get out now. See? And the Bible makes it very plain that Satan was corrupted through pride in verse 17. Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom. Now Satan still is wise, but he has a corrupted wisdom. He's still beautiful, but he has a blemished beauty. And, 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 and most of us, when we think about him, we think that he's an ugly creature. That he's dressed up in a red and black suit, and he's got horns coming out of both heads, both sides of his head. He's got a long tail coming from behind that if you touch it, it'll stick you on the end. And he's got a fork in one hand and a shovel in the other, and he's scooping up coal, keeping the fire hot in hell, and... And that's the way we think about him, that he's an ugly creature, not so. I come by to tell you, sometimes Satan has hair that's black and silky as raven feathers. Sometimes Satan got pretty golden locks hanging down till they touch his back. Sometimes his eyes shine like black sapphires and in the midnight glow like dotted pearls. Sometimes Satan got cheeks like pieces of pomegranate and got lips like threads of scarlet and tongue as sweet as a honeycomb. Sometimes the devil's neck is as smooth as the Tower of Babel. Got a body like a sculptor's dream with a shape like the figure eight. You know, all I'm trying to tell you is that sometimes the devil is shown up fine. Talking about he's an ugly creature. He might be sitting next to you right now. For all you know, you could have made love to him last night. He ain't ugly. He keeps himself desirable to where everybody will want him. God Almighty. So, so point, point number one, Satan is created in perfection. Point number two, Satan is corrupted in pride. Point three now, and I'm going to come home on, on, in, in, a, in a moment behind this, but just let me tell you, for a few moments, he continues in power. He continues in power. He continues in power. Still has some power. When God picked him up and threw him out, he didn't take away his power from him because he threw him out of heaven. Nowhere does it say he threw him into hell. One day he will be in hell, but not now. See, when he threw him out of heaven, he came to earth. That's the reason why uh, uh, Adam and Eve lost the dominion. When God created Adam and Eve, and gave them dominion over the earth. Together, long as Adam and Eve were together, they had dominion over the earth. But when she came out from under the protection of her man, and got off by herself, then here come the devil talking that chit-chat. See, he's still working now. Same way in your family. Long as a husband and a wife stays together, can't nobody talk them out of each other. Your husband did this. Oh, you shut up. Don't you come to me telling me nothing about my husband. You can't tell me nothing about my wife together. But once one gets out from under the other, he catches when you're by yourself away from the protection that comes from the seal that marriage brings. You ain't got to say, man, I'm preaching to you. As long as you're together. As long as me and my wife were together, we were all right. Time! I start looking one way and she started looking another way. Here he comes. And there the marriage goes. And he's still working the same way. 
came to the earth. Yes. Now turn that Bible now quickly so I can wrap it up for you. Luke chapter 4 right quick. I want to show you what I'm talking about is true and that I'm not lying to you. Jesus Christ was tempted by the devil. The background of this scripture, you remember when Jesus, after he was baptized in the river of Jordan, went up to the mountain and stayed there 40 days and 40 nights. And he prayed and fasted. When he came down, Satan said, If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made bread. And then Jesus answered him, Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Then Satan took him up on the pinnacle of the temple and said, Jesus, jump down. If you jump down and nothing happens to you, everybody would be, be, begin to respect you and you'll have no problems here on earth. Isn't it written that he would give his angels charge concerning thee? Jesus said, yes, that's right, that's written, but it is also written that thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. So now here Satan is now, showing Jesus all the kingdoms of the world. Amen. Say, yonder is Egypt with all of its pyramids. There is Greece with this architectural art and all of its intellect. Yonder is Rome with all of its military power. You can have all of it, Jesus, Amen. if you just worship me. See, go right back to him giving all that power. Say, I ain't going to give this no more to him. I'm going to keep this for myself because I want to be worshipped. Everything is about the devil wanting to still be worshipped. And at no point, we're going to read in a minute, does Jesus say, you ain't got the power. Because when Adam and Eve fell in the Garden of Eden, the Bible says the dominion fell from them. And Satan got it. That's why Jesus had to come into the world, not as a God, to take the power back. Because the first Adam lost it. And that's why Jesus is called the second Adam. He had to be a man. That's why he, the virgin birth is so important. Couldn't have no, no sin in his bloodstream. Amen. And that's why God took the other part of himself, Holy Ghost, yes, and dropped the Holy Sperm in the womb of a woman that had never been touched, Jesus. So here Jesus is for nine months riding the train from heaven to earth in the womb of Mary, sin all over him. Sin all under him, sin all behind him, sin all in front of him, sin all around him, but no sin in him. Because the blood was holy. That, that, that's how come babies are determined by the, the blood of the man. You don't determine who, who no father is by the woman's blood. That's why you say... Lying, it ain't none of, my, none of my baby. Well, let's uh, let's get a blood test. And when the blood test comes back and it says it's your baby, you can say it ain't. That blood says it is, and you gonna pay for it. So here, so Jesus had to come to the world, <laughs> like like all other men had to come, and all other men had to be born. Watch now, chapter 4 of Luke, verse 5. And the devil, taking him up into a high mountain, showed unto him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. That must have been something. Amen. Jesus walking with the devil, and the devil said, You see all that over yonder? That's mine. That's mine. Rome. That's mine. Yet, Jesus was with his father in the creation. On the first day when he created the light, he said, Daddy, that's good. On the second day, the firmament, Daddy, that's good. 
third day, land, trees, and water. Daddy, that's good, fourth day, sun, moon, and star. Daddy, that's good, fifth day, the fish of the mighty deep and fire of the air. Daddy, that's good, sixth morning, the beast to roam the forest and the wood. Daddy, that's good, late that evening, made man in his own image and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Daddy, that's good, you did all of that. And now here Satan is, all of this is mine. And Jesus couldn't say no. Because the dominion had failed. All of this belongs to you. Verse 6, and the devil said unto him, that means the devil said unto Jesus, all this power. That is all of this authority, Jesus, will I give to you and the glory of them, for that is delivered unto me. Satan is saying, it has been delivered to me. I'll give it to you, Jesus. And whomsoever I will give it, I have it, and I can give it, and whomever I, to whomever I want to give it to. Verse 7, if thou therefore will worship me, Jesus, if you just worship me, all shall be thine if you just get down on your knee Amen. and worship me it all will be yours yes. ladies and gentlemen earth now is the devil's home yes, see he, he he now rules and reigns planet earth he'll rule and reign over it until Jesus comes back and chains him for a thousand years. Then banish him into hell. But remember now Satan continues in power. Though he was cast out of heaven, the devil still retains his power and his authority. He had and still has power over earth. And we see that power exercised by the occults. Ouija boards, Amen. astrology, baby, what sign you born under? Me and you must be together because you Capricorn, I'm Cancer. See, that's, that's devil work. Seances, spiritism, reincarnation, war, terroristic attack. 911 all, right, all done by the devil yes, sir. Osama bin Laden devil's work Saddam Hussein devil's work George W. Bush devil's work. He controls this world through sin. The fact about it, the devil is the author and finisher of sin. The author of all evil, the author of all violence. It is he who causes war, misery, suffering, sadness, heartache, heartbreak, bad set, setbacks, poverty, earthquakes, blindness, Famine, death, and yet we ask ourselves, why does God allow these things to happen? It's Satan's earth. It's Satan's earth. So as I leave you here now, God bless your power, your heart. He continues in power. There's always been the battle between Jesus and Satan about who is the greatest. Amen. That's why the dominion had to be taken back from him so that you determine the dominion now by the choice you make. Amen. If you receive Christ in your heart today, you help that dominion power switch to move the balance of power from the hands of Satan 
into the hand of Jesus. If you look back through history, you find that there's always been the question about which one is the greatest. Pharaoh thought he was the greatest until the death angel began to ride through the streets of Egypt. Goliath thought he was the greatest until David took a little slingshot and hit him in the mold of his head. Hannibal thought he was the greatest until he tried to climb the Appalachian Mountain. Uh, Muhammad Ali thought he was the greatest until he climbed in the rain with Joe Frazier. Satan thought he was the greatest until Jesus met him on Calvary. Then my brother and my sister on Calvary that day, they both stepped in the rain weighing 200 pounds. The devil put 200, put the gloves of evil on his hands. Jesus put the gloves of good on his hands. Satan weighed 200 pounds, 50 pounds of hate, 50 pounds of jealousy, 50 pounds of malice. 50 pounds of all kind of sin. Jesus weighed 200 pounds. 50 pounds of faith. 50 pounds of hope. 50 pounds of goodwill. 50 pounds of love. They both stepped in the ring undefeated. Satan had won over Adam and Eve. Nimrod. Belshazzar, Nebuchadnezzar, King Ahab, and Queen Jezebel. Jesus stepped in the rain, having been undefeated by Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Rebecca, Zephaniah, Hagar, Zechariah, and Malachi. Time was the timekeeper. Calvary was the ring. Justice was the referee. The Holy Ghost was the ring announcer. Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John were the news reporters. That day they battled all night long for three days until he got up early Sunday morning with all power invested in his hand. So I'm going to close here now when I tell you that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but one day will have everlasting life. And you know the story about how when mankind came into the world that the devils called their council together and then picked out what is known as an anti-salvation committee. And the devil did not want mankind to be saved. So it says that they had a meeting and the moderator says, we've got to come up with a way that men will not receive Jesus. And We've got to come up with a way that men will walk and turn their backs on the Almighty God. And he took the gather of all hell, rabbled it together, and I hear him saying, the house is now open for suggestions. And one demon says, your majesty, well, I offer a motion that you let me go up to earth. And everybody I see, every boy, girl, man, and woman, I tell them that there is no God. And I heard the man saying, no, that won't work. Because time he sees a tree, he'll know that there is a God. Because nobody can make a tree but a God. 
Oh Lord, and time he sees it. the sky is blue by day and then black by night. We'll let him know there's a God somewhere. Mm, my God, and I heard him saying that suggestion will not hold. Mm, my Lord, and then I heard another demon said, Well, your majesty, let me go up. Mm, and let me tell them that Jesus is not real. Oh, Lord, and that Jesus is not a real, a real Savior and a real Son of God. Mm, but I heard him say, No, that won't work. Mm, because when they study the virgin birth, mm, and when they study the virtuous life of Jesus, uh, yes, yeah, when they read about uh, his vicarious suffering uh, and his victorious resurrection, mm, they'll know then that Jesus is real. Mm, oh, Lord. And I hear them singing now, real, real. Mm, Jesus uh, is real real to me. So many people doubt him, but I can't live without him. That is why I love him so. He's so real to me. Oh, Lord. And then I heard another one saying, Mr. Moderator, how about letting me go? And everybody I see, I tell them that the Bible is not the word of God. I heard him say, no, that won't work. Because when they read passages like the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want, they'll know that's God's word. Did you hear what I'm saying? When they read about the Lord is my light and my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life, of whom shall I be afraid? They'll know that that's God's word. When they read about be not deceived, God is not mocked, whatever man so, that same thing shall he also reap. I cannot let you go. But way over yonder in the back, there was a gray-headed demon. I'm talking about an old demon. And I heard him say, well, Mr. Moderator, how about letting me go? And if I go, I'll tell every man, woman, boy, and girl that there is a God. If I go, I tell them that Jesus is real. If I go, I let them know the Bible is the word of God. And then pandemonium broke out among the demons. What's wrong with you, man? He said, I'm not finished. If I go, I'll tell them that they need to be saved. Did you hear what I'm saying? And I heard him saying, you must be crazy. You must have turned from a demon into an angel. Get on out of here. He said, wait a minute now. I get out in their heart. Tell them that they need to be saved. And then I whisper in their ear and let them know, wait a while. Mm -hmm. Did you hear what I'm saying? I let them know they still got time. I wonder if I got a witness here today. Yes, I am. Somebody here. Right now, God been telling you, you need to be in my church. Did you hear what I'm saying? But you stand to yourself by procrastination. I still got time. I'll wait a while. I'll wait until next year. I'll wait till the holidays are over. And the devil is saying, I'll catch him at a red light. And when he begins to go on a green light, make somebody run the red light. Kill him and snap his soul in the judgment. And we as demons will grab that 
soul and his soul will be lost. I wonder if I got a witness here. Yes, I will. Oh, yes. Good God Almighty. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. Oh, yes.
was a great test now. How many down here? Eight, nine. The great test who will say, I'm for Jesus and I'll walk for him and make my commitment before the holiday even starts. I'm not going to wait until New Year when everybody else is making resolutions. But I know it's right and I know God has something for me to do. My mama, my big mama, my daddy, my big papa taught me that God should be in my life and I'm going to take this walk for Jesus. I want everybody who's saved and in the church, sit down, and the rest of you who are not and will take that walk, come on down this aisle now. There you go. There you go. I feel men need to be down here because he attacks the man if he can stop the black man the black man he can stop the whole race
get you out of here now. Did you enjoy the word today? Did you get something out of it? Did you understand what's going on? Why all the war and the drugs and the killing? The devil is in control. For now, he's got a chain on him, but it's a long one. It goes all the way around the world. One of these old days, when enough of us make the decision that I'm on the Lord's team, I'm on the Lord's side, let come what may from day to day, I'm a child of the king. Now hear me now, whatever you're going through with your children, downsizing on the job, Fixing up weak downsizing when really they laying you off or firing you. The only reason why it's happening is so that you, as a child of God, can come to see God. If you got to go to bankruptcy court, go on down there. Proud. Don't be sneaking around, hiding about, I, I got to file bankruptcy. Oh, you just broke. Go on down there. God will meet you in your brokenness. You got to be chicken about that. Repeat after me as you lift your right hand. Everything that I go through as God's child that's negative, that's bad, that doesn't look good to me, I know and I believe it is because I am to see God. You walk on that this week and you live on that. All of you all who come to join our church today, just you stand. So glad to have you. And I need you. We need you. God bless your heart. We're going to lift our tithes and our offering make this announcement those of you who signed up for Thanksgiving vouchers we used to give baskets and the baskets were so old even the canned goods was old date had worn out on them and I said well the best thing for us to do is quit all this and really show the folks that we are concerned. And so we do vouchers for top-notch stores. That you can go in and use them on what you already got or buy what you want. Now, it ain't no whole lot, but it's more than you had. And it does show you that the church is concerned about you. Now, if you... Um, get dead down on your, on your situation and you just dead broke. I can't help everybody, but I'll give you what I can. Seldom do I send anybody away empty-handed. And whoever says that I've sent them away empty-handed, that's because they've been in the church two years, three years, four years, and they ain't never gave the church nothing. You understand? Because I'm too big hearted for that. And I really, I really enjoy seeing people do well. I really do. I really enjoy seeing you do well. We're going to lift our tithes and offerings. And on your way out now, if you signed up, get your voucher. If you didn't sign and you hungry, tell them. I'm going to still be here. We'll make sure you get something before you leave. And then if you're shamed, call on the phone tomorrow. <laughs> and we'll help you then. And don't, don't nobody have to even see you. We just hear you. 
hide that. Let's give God a hand then. Monday we're usually closed, but this Monday because of the short week will be open, so you'll know you can adjust yourselves from that. All right, now I want to show you our grand elder Lillian had to leave, so I got to take this part over. I don't know. This is what you did last Sunday. You gave $21,401.58 this worship service did. And that Wednesday night when my son was over here with his wife, it was $2,138.45, giving a total for the east side for that week of... Um, $45,441.80. And then we collected in the mail last week. You sent in or brought by the church $5,963.27. Give yourselves a big hand. All right, come on with the table, brethren. We're going to give our tithes and offerings. If you keep God on the altar first, when you're broke, you're tired. When you get some money, you don't. That's, you know, you, the more money you get, the harder it is to tithe. You can give $10 out of 100 That don't look like much. But it's hard to give 100 out of 1000 And yet it's the same percentile. Understand? Make your way go. Make your way go. Let him see. Let him see. Let him see your heart as you move on. God wants to see the heart. Everybody who wants to give today, lift your hand. God bless your hearts, children. Repeat after me today. My tithe is the debt I owe. My offering is the seed I sow. Heavenly Father, I pray for every hand that is raised in this wall tone mean deviled world. Thank you for Jesus for giving us a chance to change the destiny of the world's course. Many of these people in here today are at wit's end. And I pray that this week, maybe even on Thanksgiving Day herself, that you really reveal yourself to them as never before. In the sweet name of Jesus, we pray. Let us all say, amen. All right, now the ushers are going to pass the containers. Wait a minute, wait a minute. And don't be so fast that you miss a roll or whatever. Just take your time and come on. Lord, prepare me to be. You may begin. are going to help them with the orientation yeah, so that they don't have to stay that long. That's good. to your feet, show love all around you, I love you in Jesus on all sides, behind and front, and then put your arm around your sister and your brother on both sides.
wherever I go, I want the Spirit to follow me. Let the Spirit follow me now. Wherever I go, whatever I do, holiday season, good times, but yet dangerous times too. May God give you health in your sickness, wealth in your poverty. May the Lord be gracious to you and to yours. May he smile on you, lift his countenance upon you. May he bless you, grant you his peace and inner contentment. Do it for you now, henceforth, and forevermore. All together now. Oh. 